Okay. <laughs> Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Dad. Just get out of bed. Yeah. You get your jumper on. It's a bit cooler in the mornings now, isn't it? Yes, it is. But it's still really warm in the day. And, yeah, look, thanks for coming to watch the last video yesterday. Karen, you saw a Karen's... What is it again? What have you got in that little box? Praying mantis. You saw Karen's praying mantis. And you've got to look at my avocado tree. And today, what we're doing is I'm actually showing you I'm building a new dig garden. I don't build many dig gardens, but I have my reasons for this one along the fence. And Karen's going to show you because the... Uh, the praying mantis, we need to check if it's okay, don't we? Yes, we do. We'll go and have a look? Yeah. And then we'll show everyone the garden outside. Okay. Let's go, shall we? Marty's Garden teaches you how to grow fresh food in urban places and small spaces. Where's the praying mantis, Karen? It's sleeping. Sleeping? Yeah. Is it still okay, though? Yeah. Open up the lid and let's have a look. We read something interesting about praying mantises yesterday about how they can change colour, is that right? Um, that's for a different praying mantis. Is it? Yeah. They can change colour to to the flower or something. So where is it? Point him out. Yeah. Is that him next to there? Yeah. Let's bring it over into the light a bit. Let's have a little bit of a look. I'm sure people will be interested to see how the praying mantis is still going. So what have you been feeding it? Um, moths and spiders. Moths and spiders? It eats the spiders. And you did a silly thing yesterday and put a bee in there, didn't you? Yeah. And there was a bit of an accident almost nearly with the bee. But it seems pretty content down there now. It's starting to move a little bit. Maybe we're sleeping. We woke him up, maybe. So I've started a brand new garden and actually my soil is super sandy so it's a bit of an issue. Luckily there was a bit of organic matter in there, about two inches of sandy loam until it actually hit pure white sand down the bottom. Nearly everything you see planted here has come out of containers so there's quite a lot of soil around the roots already. Just like this heat loving Egyptian spinach that has gone into bud. As you can see, it looks similar to okra, right? Well, it's related to okra, and you can actually eat the buds when they're very small. Another welcome addition that just come out of a pot into this garden is the rosella bush. Now, this plant actually comes out of Africa, and it produces these edible buds that people make jams and different chutneys and things out of, and they're really quite pretty. And as you can see here, it's just starting to bud up now, and will apparently bud up right through into winter. Now, I'm totally new to this plant. It's the first time growing it, and I'm really happy to have it in the garden. So I'll be showing you more of how this guy buds up and what I'm actually able to do with these flowers. What's this, Dad? These are actually bromeliads, Karen, and I have a reason for them being in the garden. Why are they in the garden? Uh, because they hold water and they store humidity. So some plants like the humidity around the tropical plants, and also the insects can come and have a little drink out of there. That's a good idea. Yeah, you like that idea, don't you? Because they got somewhere to drink, and even some places where you got little frogs and things, they'll lay their eggs and stuff in there as well, tree frogs and that. Okay. The trick is, no, not to have too many, because if you have too many, then you can start breeding mosquitoes. Okay. One plant that I know will perform really well in this sandy soil is my medicinal aloe vera here. Now you can see the white spots on it. Now if you're looking at aloe vera and you're after the one for your skin, then that's how you can tell which it is. You can see it's been harvested quite a lot because I use it when I get a bit of sunburn or I've just been out in the sun too long or sometimes when I have a little cut. So there's good and bad points about sandy soil, right? It actually is easy to dig. Uh, the plants don't get stuck in, in uh, any root rot and things like that because the moisture is free flowing, free draining. The only thing is you've got to add a lot of water to it and over time, if you don't have the money like me, you've got to slowly build up this soil. Now some people like to actually throw in like penetrate and things like that to build up uh, those lorikeets, they're so noisy. Uh, yeah, they like to throw in penetrate, things that holds the moisture, uh, water crystals and the such. Uh, I just prefer to go the more organic method and just build up the soil over time and 
during that time actually just liquid feed them uh, so they get the nutrition that they need until the time that the worms and everything started coming in. Actually when I started digging this up I found there were some really big earthworms in here so there is some organic matter in here. If there was no earthworms there wouldn't be any in, in here at all. So if you just have a look at this you can see where I've added some of the organic matter on top and some of the pellets and it's it's pretty sandy but it'll work for now uh, it is coming into the cooler period the cooler time of the year and uh, a lot of these plants are gonna actually they'll you know they'll stop growing a lot and will actually kick back some of them will keep going on a bit but not too much so that'll give me time to prepare this garden over the, uh, the autumn and the winter months and get it really ready for uh, next spring. What's coming up for the Marty's Garden Show? Well, Karen, in the next video, what we're going to be doing is mulching the dig garden along the fence. You see, the mulch will keep the soil and the roots warm in winter and cooler in summer. It'll also add extra humus over time and get those microbes coming along. And in this next video, what I'm going to do is talk about these microbes more so your plants can stay healthy and disease resistant free.